On today's show, the Mavs went 0-2 this weekend. What can we learn from the Mavs' two very different losses to the Sixers and the Hornets? And the Mavs have the Timberwolves twice this week. Why are these matchups so crucial for the Mavs' entire season? We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all, pla- all pla- platforms, including YouTube. <laughs> Off my game after missing two episodes. <laughs> Thank, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And joining me, as always, my co host, writer, and contributor at Mavs.com, the fill in. Bo, the one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? Thank God you're back. I blame the losses on <laughs> you. Yeah, I missed two pods. The Mavs go 0 and 2, and you had to fill in at both of them. I blame it on you. Uh, there was somebody who tweeted at. At us after the uh, the second loss and said Isaac Solopod, I'm out. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I was almost out myself. I didn't like. Did I listen to it? No, I didn't listen to it. I did. I listened to both of them. You did a great <laughs> job. Isaac does a great job when he's solo. Thank you guys. <laughs> but when we're together, I suck. He's not great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today we're gonna go through we're gonna go through the uh, the losses over the weekends. So yeah, the Mavs lose to the 76ers in the first game. They lose. Uh, 101 to 111 against the Sixers. There's a couple of runs in that game. And then 108 to 129 to the Hornets. That game was just, it, there was moments in that game that just didn't feel like the Mavs had any shot, right? Like you could have thrown an all-star team against that Hornets team and the Hornets just would have beat them. But what are things we can learn about that? We'll talk about that. And then we'll look ahead to the week coming ahead. What's the Mavs schedule coming up this week? They have Minnesota twice. Why are those two games so important? What is Minnesota going to look like since we're going to see them twice this week? And then what what are the what's the standings? What are the Mavs chances of falling into the play in? Because that is a possibility right now. So we'll talk about that a little later. But let's just ask a couple of big questions after a couple of these weekend games. So I thought your episode after the Sixers one was well titled. What do the Mavericks do after what do the Mavericks do against the zone? Oh. That was the thing that the Sixers decided to throw at them in the that first loss um, that really stopped the Mavs, basically. Spencer Dinwiddie, 4 of 12, just scored, just scored 12 points. Luka Doncic, 5 of 20, scored 17 points. He took 10 threes, and he missed eight of them. Uh, the zone really affected them a lot. What do you think, uh, now having a couple of days to think about it, what do you think affected them so much with that zone, and can the Mavs change anything? I mean – what do you do from such a young age, like back to like high school ball, even like middle school ball, I guess it's like when you first learn the zone, it's like, all right, two, three zone. If you can't man up against somebody, it's like, Hey, we can't guard these guys. So we got to do the zone. But what's the first thing that your coach says when you go into the zone, you're like, Hey, we're just going to dare them to shoot threes because yep. we're, we can't shoot out of the zone. Out. Yeah. And it's like, you just hope the other team doesn't shoot well from three and <laughs> That's what happened. And they did that against Mavs and they didn't shoot that well. But it wasn't even that they didn't shoot as well. Like they didn't attempt enough. Like that yeah, didn't that was like that. because it threw them off so much in the sense of Dallas loves to just drive and kick. They've they're so unselfish that they they pass it, they you know, they drive, they kick, and then they just, you know, they move the ball around. Like ball movement this year, incredible. But it's tough to move the ball against the zone because you try to drive and then they close in because there's all these people in the zone and it just threw them off. And it's like Brunson even said after the game, he said, we were passive. We were too passive. We, and we overpassed at times. And I'm like, thank God. Cause I'm like writing down these same notes. I'm like, am I crazy? Because they're just passing too much. So I think the next time they see a zone, I think that one, that's the biggest question we asked. Like, all right, who's what, what team's going to play zone against them next. Yeah. The next time they do it, they got to shoot more threes. They have to shoot it quicker it, I don't care if it's early in the shot clock. If somebody gets, you know, open on the wing, launch it. Let's do it. And that that's their thing because you're not going to be able to drive and kick. Yeah, they took 32 threes total in the game. They only took 13 in the second half. Now, they made six of the 13 of them, which was good. But, like, one of them was Berton's late. One of them was Josh Green. Um, but, yeah, like, they they have they – ha- you have to shoot yourself out of it. 
Uh, the other thing is that Sixers team is pretty rare. I don't know if you're going to find a team that's that big that plays that massive of a, of a lineup. Like Tyrese Maxey and then James Harden are the smallest guys that even played. <laughs> the other day uh obviously Embiid huge Tybal and Harris wings uh George Niang wing Danny Green wing Shake Milton played a little bit DeAndre Jordan right like wing Mac, Ma- yeah Max <laughs> DeAndre Jordan just big in general uh but Maxi and Maxi and Harden uh that that tracks <laughs> Maxi and Harden were the, the you know the smallest guys that they played and uh, and Harden's like 65 he's not real he's not a small guard and Maxi is not that small either and so I don't know if you're going to face a team like that very often just it's that big especially with Embiid as the rim protector because you just, you all you like it's like if Utah had a bunch of good wings oh wait they used to they used to have a bunch of good defensive wings one of them was Yang uh, but if you had like a Gobert in the in you know on the back line plus a bunch of wings to stop you from you know actually driving getting in driving lanes too it's just very it's very tough when that team is playing well like that um, and plus, Luca didn't have any of the like the mid range stuff. Like none of his none of his shots were just going at all in this game. Uh, they alternated. That, it's like that game he sucked, and then the, <laughs> because then the I next game. I think the answer is that Luca is just better. <laughs> Luca better against that zone because Luca is the one that breaks his zone on on its own, right? Like you can't trap and do a zone at the same time because then all of a sudden there's just you know you're playing. Then you're playing just three on on five. <laughs> like if you if you trap, the guy gets past the trap, and then you're in a zone. Like it's just it doesn't really work. You leave all that stuff, all that space in the middle of the floor open. And so I, I think that Luca just has to be better against the zone. He breaks the zone on its on his own, and uh, I rhymed that on purpose. And I think that um, I think that's I think that's what happens next with the zone. Yeah, it just throws them off. That's the only thing because you know you want to do the high pick and roll to White. And so it's just a lot, it's a lot harder to do that pick and roll whenever somebody's in a zone. So, it, you know, Luca is always going to find an open guy for three, especially the next team that plays the zone. There's going to be open shots. So yeah. I think that that's the thing. Luca will be better, but the other guys just have to knock down the open shots. Uh, that game both had had Brunson and Dinwiddie in it as well. I wonder if part of that is you bring Dinwiddie and and Brunson up to like the wings instead of in the corners because they've been kind of throwing Dinwiddie or they've been throwing like one of them in the corners so that they're all on the same side. Maybe you do something like that so there's release valves on both sides of the court and when Dwight goes in the middle of the court um, to break that trap. Uh, Joel Embiid though, 32 points, 11 of 20 from the field, eight boards. He he had zero offensive rebounds. He had six turnovers. He was only a plus five. That's a win. <laughs> like that's a yeah. win against him. Uh, he's averaging about thirty points a game. So if he scores thirty-two, you're just, you're keeping him right at average. He didn't kill you in a way that you'd think that he would normally. Uh, when you know Dwight Powell's your starting center, Maxi Kleba is your backup, and then like Marquise Chris plays like seven minutes because he's just coming back from that injury. What do you think they did against uh, against Joel Embiid, and what can they do against you know a Jokic or a Towns or somebody like that that they're going to see soon? Yeah, that was one of my big takeaways from the game because, you know, obviously just trying to draw a positive out of it was like, hey, with the new small ball Mavs, we didn't get obliterated by Embiid no. because that, you know, as soon as they, you know, they went small and they made this change after the you know trade deadline or yeah, after the big trade with yeah. Porzingis, uh, shout out to his dunk on LeBron, but they committed to Porzingis. that. And then, and then everybody was like, oh, man, what's going to happen though when we play one of the b- best centers in the league? It's like, all right, well, let's just wait until the next time we see Jokic or Embiid, whoever. We saw Embiid. It's like, all right, let's line up a, a 40, 40 ball with, you know, about 18 boards. And it just wasn't that. And they just switched. They brought doubles, you know, in the post. They And that was just like, all right, it, it's not that bad. If you're in that camp sitting there saying, there's no way we'll be able to beat a team that has a, a dominant big man out there with Dwight Powell as the center. That just wasn't the case for the, you know, Philly game. The Mavs just stayed together on defense, right? Like to your yeah. point, they, they doubled and they doubled well. They knew exactly, okay, we're gonna sell out the same way we sell, sold out against Kevin Durant late, you know, late in that game and said, Hey, we're just gonna double you. Okay, we're just gonna double Joel Embiid too. And James Harden's only gonna beat you when you're already when the team is already up by 10. I don't know if you noticed that in this game either, but like James Harden really didn't get going until the team was already up. And that's that kind of tracks with <laughs> the way that he plays yes. in general. Uh, and he's, he's but, but they didn't have an answer for him though. True. He didn't start barking though until they were already up 10. He hits the shot to make him go up like 13 or <laughs> you're like, okay, cool, man. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, like it, it's hard to have, it's hard to, to guard both of those guys at the same time, but I thought they did a good job on Joel Embiid. And, uh, and I think that's the answer for like a Jokic or a talents is you double quick 
and you rotate well like you everybody has to be on point like everyone has to be right in the right spot and to to you know run along like you just see luca flying all over the court on defense because he has to right he has to rotate all the way to the other corner and and uh that's the way that you stop those big guys like that plus you know the gang rebounding um the offensive rebounding i, th- I thought that was the big thing is and didn't get any offensive rebounds didn't kill you in the second chance points didn't kill you in the offensive rebound department um some of that is luck some of that is just um some of that is just the mavs like getting to those boards well they yeah. won the rebounding battle and they won the points in the paint battle it's like boom never would have thought that going against Embiid. no no uh but coming up and a couple more questions the reason why they lost that game even though they won the points in the paint battle is because of the three-point shooting um also um we got marquis chris back maxi kleba maybe shooting better luca there was one there was a couple of possessions in the Hornets game. I really want to talk about about Luca and see if it's a bigger problem. Talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Built Bar. It's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're absolutely delicious. And to prove that they're delicious, this is a fresh, Ooh, alive, alive, fresh wrapper. No, I just finished it. I already ate it. Oh, wow. I, I the churro it. puff bar. How could I just open this and not have eaten it? Churro puff bar, absolutely delicious. 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, six grams of sugar, and a bar covered in 100% chocolate and filled with marshmallow. They're great. The churro puff bars are available. I got to get myself a box. All right. Churro puff, order now. Go to it. Put it in your cart. Sign in. You can get some rewards. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your entire order. It's built.com and it's built different. Thanks for making Lockdown Mavs your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Isaac Harris, a couple more questions from the games over the weekend. Mavs lose to the Hornets. This one, you recapped it well. Basically, the Hornets just shot their butts off and shot their stingers off, and it was just an incredible shooting night from them. Um, but the end of the third quarter, there's a couple of plays where – the Mavs just couldn't get it going. The three-point shooting of the Hornets was just incredible. The Mavs couldn't get any off any real offense going. And the end of the third quarter, Luca did a thing that I haven't seen him do maybe ever in his Ooh. career. He takes the ball up the court, and then he just passes it. He does the swing pass to initiate the offense, either to Burke or Green or whoever else, Frank Nilakina, whoever else was out there with him. And then he just stood at half court. And he did this for three or four possessions in a row. You could tell he was frustrated. You could tell that he was upset. You know, he just kept getting more and more upset throughout the game. He's trying to keep it in. He's not going to get any more technicals. There was a couple moments in that game where you could tell he was ready to get at some refs, but he learned and he explained to JJ Redick that he sings a song. <laughs> he sings a song when he wants to not <laughs> when he wants to not argue with the refs. That was an incredible podcast, by the way. The interview with JJ Redick and Luca. Um, but Luca is going to try to keep con- composed. And in this game, he took like, he basically took three or four possessions off where he just didn't get involved in the offense at all. He just basically like gave up. And then kid did not play him in the fourth quarter at all. Is that something we've seen from Luca in the past? And is that just because of the frustration of that one specific game or is it building, building from something else? I don't think it's building from any, but anything else. I think when you have a game to where there's six Charlotte Hornets who score more points, than your second leading scorer on the team. Um, I think I think I would feel the same way if I was Luca. Like it's just one of those nights where I mean, you know he loves his teammates and he loves all those guys and he's never going to say anything about about them, but in that game particular like nobody was hitting. Nobody was doing anything. And it's like, all right. He really felt on the island. Now, they were missing Dinwiddie. They were missing Reggie Bullock. Big. Big. Tim Hardaway is obviously still out. Like still that's big. 50, $50 million of your, your, your cap right there, just sitting on the bench. And all three of those guys get buckets. So, uh, you know, you understand it. But still, I don't I don't blame Luca for feeling like he did. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see that on the court. Like, come on, like, don't don't do that on the court. But if there's one game that you're looking at and saying, hey, what would when would you be the most frustrated on the court? It would be this game for Luca. I thought that too. I thought, okay, it's just one of those one-off games, but we've also, we had, you know, they had a one-off. It was the third quarter, right? End of the third. Yeah. It was so the, the third quarter, he scores 21 points. <laughs> Dwight Powell scored five points. Maxi scored two points. So the third quarter, there were only seven other points. Only two other Mavs scored in the entire third quarter. 
outside of Luka Doncic. And they were, they were definitely assists from him, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, but, but Luka's 21 points. So if I'm putting up 21 points in a quarter and I'm doing my thing, and I'm looking around saying, hey, it's, you know, I'm the I'm the Will Smith meme, like looking around like, hey, what's <laughs> or John Travolta? I was going like, to say, <laughs> like, what the crap's going on? So the Will Smith meme is when everybody moves out and it's just you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I didn't think it was built up from anything else. I just thought it was interesting that I had never seen him do that before. We got so frustrated. He just took off a possession. Like it was, it felt like, remember like the way Westbrook and Harden used to play off the ball. They just wouldn't do anything. And sometimes, oh. sometimes kind of still do. It just, it felt like that. And we're not used to seeing that from Luca. Uh, but yeah, no Dinwiddie, no Bullock, obviously no Tim Hardaway Jr. Still. And, uh, Burke wasn't doing anything. Brunson was, was really bad in that game. Um, Burke's not doing that. Burke wasn't doing anything positive. Let me let me say that Burke did not have a good game no. against the Hornets, and so that's you just have no more options then. And so uh, yeah, I, I didn't think it was anything more, but thought it was interesting and notable. Bigger loss after the two losses, or bigger like loss: Bullock or uh, Bullock, Dinwiddie or Pinson. Oh, Theo, <laughs> our guy. No, I mean that Dinwiddie being out of the Charlotte game. You understood it because the second I have a back to back, you know, yep. they're doing the same thing that he was on in Washington, but they needed him so bad in that game. <laughs> and it's kind of alarming how bad they needed him because, it was. you know, Brunson only put up 10 points in that game. And that's the game that, hey, if we're going to pay you 20 million, we need you to step up. <laughs> and the fact that we missed Dinwiddie that bad of his source of, you know, offense was alarming to me. Yeah, that was brutal. Also, not having Bullock, I think, really just changes their defense, right? That first game, uh, you, the first game afterwards, you were talking about how Dinwiddie, like, hey, the guy is 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 doing his thing. He cannot guard James Harden, right? That would have Bullock would would have been the guy to guard James Harden, right? The re, you know they didn't throw Dorian on him specifically, but um, but that would have been the guy. And so to have two wing defenders, it just it's way better than having one, right? It's not even just a one plus one; it's like a one times five basically yeah. to have more it's like a multiplier to have um multiple wing defenders like that like dorian and with bullock so having bullock out recently has been tough he is going to play in this minnesota game and so that is going to be a, a huge thing coming up so let's move into setting up the week and talking about the standings the mavs schedule this week tonight monday if you're listening watching this they play the minnesota timberwolves at home this is going to be a big game i've seen i've been reading through timberwolves reddit and there's a post that's got a bunch of upvotes that says this is the biggest game of the year for them. Whoa. Which, hey, it probably is because right I mean, now this heck team for them, it might be the biggest game of the decade. This, this team is playing incredibly well right now, and they're only a game and a half back from the Mavericks. They're in the sixth seed finally after the Nuggets lost on Sunday night, and they're a game and a half back from the Dallas Mavericks. Now, let me just run through a couple things with this Timberwolves team, what, what we should expect and all that. Timberwolves, they play super fast. They're one of the fastest teams in the league. Mavs play super slow. This is going to be one of those games where if you start seeing it, them, them play really fast, if this game is paced really, really fast, then it's not going in the Mavs' favor, right? I think that's just – that comes down to that. If you start – if the game starts feeling so fast that you almost can't follow it, then all, then that's going in the, Ma in the, the Wolves' favor. The Wolves – for the entire season, have the sixth best offense in the NBA. They also have the 11th best defense in the NBA. That is, in, those are insane numbers right there. That is, those numbers are nearly an NBA champion quality numbers. Like you have to be top 10 in both to be able to be like an NBA, like an NBA champion. There's just very little uh, exceptions. And so they're sixth in offense and 11th in defense for the whole year. Since January 3rd, they're 26 and 10. They're playing like, according to Cleaning the Glass, is, you know, they take all their numbers and they say, okay, well, what were you, what are you playing like? They're playing like a 61-win team since January 3rd. Since January 3rd, first in offense, 10th in defense. And uh, it's, it's incredible to look at what this, this team is doing right now. I mean, this is what happens when you have <laughs> – I can't even say. Stop. Stop. <laughs> the greatest shooting – Do not. Do not <laughs> disrespect the GOAT. Oh my gosh. And they're, they're playing really good basketball. There's no way around it. Um, it, you know, I, I haven't looked at the bet online numbers, but is there a bet online, um, uh, you know, technical number for Pat Beverly in this game? Technical. Oh man. Uh, is it a, is there a how, number how of points bad? scored on him? I think there is, there is a chance that Pat Beverly is going into this game saying, I don't care 
how many how, if we win or not. I just he's he's locked in to get Luca another tech. Uh, he Mavs are favored by three. That's the only thing on bet online I can see right now. Because he he <laughs> knows Luca's like tech number, so he's gonna try so hard to get Luca a te- like. This was we're gonna sure. want. Yes, we're gonna hate Pat Beverly by the end of the for sure this week. Um, but they've been their offense playing playing incredibly well. They have these guys in you know in Towns, obviously in D'Angelo Russell, Anthony Edwards, and even Malik Beasley can all put up twenty on any given night. And you know Towns and Edwards and Russell do put up 20 on pretty much any given, every given night. Um, Towns is shooting incredibly well this year. 53% of the floor, 41% from three. He's, he's the best shooting big man in the NBA right now. Is he the best of all time? No, get out of here. Leave. Win a playoff series. Uh, Anthony Edwards, incredible athlete. It's going to be interesting to see who they put on Edwards and who they put on Russell between Bullock and Dorian. And Bullock and Dorian will both be back for this game and both be there. Uh, and then Dinwiddie, We'll uh we'll be back as well. Do you think they start with the three guard lineup, or you think they go with the multiple wings and then the uh you know the one big? I think Dinwiddie goes back to the bench and you know, Reggie's so. yeah Reggie's back out there. Um, I think an underrated player for them is Jared Vanderbilt, and yeah, I, I just love his energy. He's like the perfect X factor guy for that team, or really any good team. That's a dude I'm watching. I'm saying saying like, hey he can't have 12 rebounds in this game. Like that just can't happen. Who will Luca guard in this game? I'll be curious. Is it, is it Vanderbilt? You know, who will they, all of that, but can, can, will we see some Marquise Chris in this game? Remember earlier in the season, it was, you know, they threw Marquise Chris out against town. Did a Great job. Did a great job. And I wonder if, you know, how quick, what did you think about Chris over the weekend? Those two games? Yeah, it's a great question, Isaac. And I'll answer it coming. <laughs> What what a great! <laughs> we we'll just put it. I've never felt more like we're on the radio in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer that and more coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online. It's a sports book that's also got the best odds, contests, player props. Bet Online is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. Go check it out. The best spot for scores and news. They got the Dallas Mavericks favored by three points against the Minnesota Timberwolves. If you're feeling that, if you're saying Luka is going to have a bounce back, there's no way they lose three games in a row. I don't know if they've lost three games in a row this year, uh, or at least more than once. One, two. They've done it twice. The last time the Mavs lost three games in a row was in December against New Orleans, Memphis, and Brooklyn, those three games. Um, so if you don't think the Mavs are going to lose three games in a row, take the money line or just take the, you know, take them straight up or take the, uh, you know, the spread on that. Go ahead and check it out. Bet online, head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. It's bet online where the game starts and doesn't end. All right, Isaac Harris. One of my questions earlier, we didn't get to, I had a couple more questions about the weekend's games. One of them was about Marquise Chris back in the lineup and what can he bring? I think he can bring – he's going to be one of their answers against a guy like Towns. Now, does does the way that the Mavs have changed their defense change the way that they're going to defend a guy like Towns now? Because I think they're just going to throw a double on him Yeah. When he, if he gets into the post, right? You don't have to do it on the on the perimeter. You can just stick, stay up with him, and then if he, gets, if he gets by your man, then all of a sudden that Mavs rotating defense can get back to him. But I, I think that – I don't think we're going to see Marquise Chris as much as we might think. First of all, because I think he's still on a minutes restriction – yeah and secondly because i think the mavs have changed their defense so much that he may not factor in as much as he we would have thought after the first time they matched up when he did really well yeah i think they they bring the double a lot it's just harder when you know you face Embiid and you're saying all right we'll dare you to shoot the three like i mean he could hit him but not hit him like towns can it's just a lot harder to double a big when Embiid hit a step back though that was very yeah. casual and like oh my gosh that guy's seven foot two and he just hit that step back He's uh, nasty. Yeah. That's it's wild to see him hit shots like that. But yeah, I think that I think that's what's going to happen with Towns. Um, this team, it'll be this will be a big test. This is a big test for that Wolves team because all of a sudden they have something to lose because they're out of the play in right now, and they haven't. This is the first time I think they've been in the playoffs, you know, in a long time. Like in this this season, they've been pretty much in that play in mix for this whole season. Yeah. They have that you know they have the tiebreaker against Denver. That's the reason why they're ahead of them, and so now. Can they pass this Mavs team? I don't. Do, do the Mavs want to get past? So they can play the Warriors instead of the Jazz. Are we going to go down that route? Listen, you just have to avoid the six. I mean, you have to avoid seven. So that's the. I think that's the only thing. I mean, 
the silver lining with the, the Golden State matchup now is obviously Steph's injury. He said today that, you know, he's shooting for that game one. He's being optimistic. Of all the of playoffs. That, of the playoffs. So either way, he's not going to be 100%. So that matchup doesn't look as bad as it did before. So at this point, you just don't want to be in a play-in. That's all. Just avoid it at all costs. That is, it's the same as kind of last year, right? Like it's the same sort of thing. Just avoid the play in at all costs. Mavs are still in that five seed. They're a game and a half above the Timberwolves. They're two games back from the Jazz. Do you think that dream is dead? No, 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 no. It's not dead. Not at all. I, so, okay, let me, let's bring it back full circle for a second. The Mavs, you know, win. I kind of detailed that road trip over the weekend. It's like they have these big wins against Boston, Brooklyn, then they lose these two games. And then, you know, then it was doom and gloom for a portion of fans. Like, oh, th- this roster sucks. Luca's going to have to leave. You know, we get the whole cycle back again. It's like when the Mavs lose a couple games. Were you, was there anything that happened those two games to where you're like, you're worried? Because I'm not overly worried coming out of those two games because we didn't have our full squad. I, I, I do think missing, you know, Dinwiddie for that Charlotte game, missing Bullock for both of those games that, you know, we lost. I think it's huge because when you look at a playoff rotation, that's what, you know, seven guys, maybe eight guys in a playoff rotation. And Dinwiddie and Bullock are major parts of the playoff rotation. So I'm not as worried going in, like, to this final stretch. If we have both of those guys, if we lose, like, two or three games with both those guys, then I'm like, okay, I, I might be a little worried. But how do you feel? No, I was worried about Brun. I'm worried about Brunson after that Hornets game. It's it's games like that that you just you need him to step up, and he did that that Philly game, which was which was nice. He had 24 points in that game. Yeah, you could tell he was being really uh, aggressive, but you just need him. Like you just need him in those games against the you know the Hornets when, especially when Dinwiddie is not there. Like you just need him more than ever. And so I am concerned about him. Uh, one of my other questions was Maxi went two of four from three and one of three one of two from three against those last two teams. So if he's back, that that helps if he's back offensively, yeah. at least that definitely helps. Um, the other thing is that both those teams shot over 40% from three Philly shot 16 of 38. They're 42%. And Charlotte shot 20 of 42, which is just unheard of 47% from three. And, uh, and the Mavs do play this game of, can we, you know, can this team shoot under like 40%? And if we do, we can win these games. And if they don't, then we're going to get beat, right? They, they allow threes. They don't let you take anything, um at at the rim necessarily because they stop driving lanes and then they stop they try they double you at the rim uh, but they allow some threes and they allow the mid-range stuff so yeah there's there's nothing that i'm i'm super concerned about of those um except for brunson <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but at least we saw at least we saw him in that philly game play well yeah and, and that was my own thing it's like hey we can't be in love with this team whenever they're fully healthy and then they lose a, a couple guys for a couple games they lose a couple games and we're like this roster sucks and it's like <laughs> really like what what How's the math working out on that? So the Mavs schedule coming up, they have Minnesota on Monday, Houston on Wednesday, Friday, they have Minnesota again. And then Sunday, if we're looking even for that, they have, they have the jazz. That's another, that's another big test that the Mavs can go out. And if they win that game, then the dream is like, if they lose that game and they lose one of these two Minnesota games, then maybe passing Utah in the standings is de- like that dream is dead. Right. Yeah. Um, but the Mavs could also just, pull it way ahead of Minnesota also win the tiebreaker against them in this stretch. And then that is, that's huge for them this week. They can get that done this week. Yeah. I mean, obviously the Monday game's huge, but the, it's a weird road trip game for that Friday one because they get rock Houston at home. And then it's just a one game trip. It's just a, Hey, fly out on Thursday, get there, play one game in Minnesota, the cold, you know, Minnesota there, and then come back you know, on Saturday for a home game against Utah. So I'll be really curious. I mean, obviously we got to see what happens on Monday and what team is going to be more motivated come Friday, but both teams really need it. So either way, I think the uh, the Sunday game is going to be a big one with Utah. If we're, um, if we're picking up, if we're, if we're looking at just the, the play in and the standings and all that. So that's the map schedule coming up. Minnesota has obviously Dallas on Monday. They have Phoenix on Wednesday. Oh, so, that's good. That's probably good for the Mavs or better for the Mavs. Friday, they play the Mavs again. Sunday, they play Boston. That next Wednesday, next week, they play Toronto. And then that next Friday, they play Denver. That is a real tough slate of games yeah. for this Minnesota team. Like that is a, their season may be defined based on those next six games. 
There, um, yeah, I mean, Denver's fight in the same spot. I, you know, I made a point over the weekend. I joked that it was like a sermon point, a sermon point, but because it felt like I was like delivering a message of it was a good line <laughs> of like that stretch last week. We thought, you know, is that going to define their seal their ceiling of what they could be in the playoffs? This stretch of game is going to show like where their seating's going to be because you you, lose backed off, you backed off of it. You you got to you got to you got to. You got to step into it. it. Lean into it. Lean into it. All right, let me lean in. Yeah, Ready? let's go. Wait, do, do I have any music for you? I don't think so. <laughs> let me lean in for a second. Guys, let me tell you something. <laughs> Reading right here. Right here in the book. Last week, that stretch of games <laughs> that stretch of games showed us the ceiling for this team. The ceiling of what the Lord has for you. No, he is at the Lord. <laughs> 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 This stretch of game, <laughs> this stretch of games coming up, it could define the seating for this team. Come down to the altar. Let's really let's see how you feel about the maps. <laughs> Come to the uh, altar. Lucas step backs missing. Why? No, it's not. It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down for them. Denver schedule, by the way. Tuesday, they play the Clippers. Thursday, they play the, the Suns. Saturday against the Thunder, who have lost nine in a row. Monday against the, those pesky Hornets. Wednesday against Indiana. And then Friday next week against the, the Timberwolves. That's a pretty easy schedule for Denver. We could all of a sudden see Denver flying up that. Um, so that's what we have. The standings are just going to change day to day. They're so close, wrapped up right now um, between Dallas, Minnesota, and Denver. Everybody else seems to be pretty comfortably where they are. The Warriors still may be falling a little bit. We'll have to monitor them, but that's where they are. We'll be following it every single day. Guys, we will have the post game for you coming up tonight against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And then again on Wednesday against the Rockets and then Friday against the Wolves as well. And then every day in between that, guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Maps. Boom.